let's talk about uh, the recent uh, the wise results and the, the records of the failure in terms of subject spaces we are reporting and the former as a former curriculum developed expert what do you attribute to the decimal performance and why there are standard multiple uh, factors. Well, the system itself is is is, is wrong okay currently i think that sums it up we have a system which is sick so it can only generate what is sick that answers your question now, um, what are your views on the need for African government to promote the teaching of local African language? Like recently, South Africa introduced um, Swahili in their curriculum. South Africa is, is well. They have may I inform you? They have eleven official languages. South Africa constitutionally, they have eleven official languages. They have eleven South African languages which can be spoken in the National Assembly and anywhere else. And that's why when you hear them sometimes, they are changing English Swahili, to, uh, KK, uh, to Zulu, to Zulu Bo, and Kosa uh, and, and, and all the rest of it. So they have 11 official languages. So it's not, this, was the, this idea was first promoted by African writers in 1958 when they had their conference in Khartoum. Sudan. Yes. They promoted the idea that they should be all their work should be translated into African languages and eventually they should also write in African languages. That means that they should go back to school again and learn how to read and write in their own languages. One, only one out of this lot I know is respecting that. Is the Kenyan famous writer Ngugi Wachonko. Mm -hmm. He has stopped writing, stopped writing in English. He's writing in Kikuyu. And if you read his works, even his novels, most of them, if you read them with care, this language issue is his passion, as it is my passion. I know him personally. We worked together in the 80s in London. But you see, as I was saying today in the, during the forum, when the two apps came here, to confuse you and to make you hate yourself and to accept that you are inferior. They have to make you believe that you don't have culture, you don't have language. Some of the races, linguists say, you have bubbles, they don't call it language. So if you want to control people, you have to demean them. You have to you have to make them accept the fact that their integrity is debased. So that's what they did to us. Now that we are free and independent, since that instrument, language, was one of the instruments that were used to oppress us and dehumanize us. Because negating the culture of a person Negating the language of a person is dehumanizing that person. Since we are free from that situation, our first task is, and you talk about democracy, our first task is to be ourselves, to be one with our people. Those who so-called educated, a term I condemn. You call yourself educated? And those who have not been to the Tubab school, you call them uneducated, <laughs> is a lie. Okay. There is no uneducated person on earth. There are illiterate people, but everybody is educated. It's not only the school that makes you educated. The world itself is a school in which everybody is learning. There are people who have not been to any of your schools who are more educated than, those you are, than some of those who are calling PhD. It is one thing to learn in university and have a certificate. It's another thing to acquire knowledge. So there are people who have acquired this knowledge without going to university or high school. One of the best writers in Senegal who has passed away, and one of the film, best filmmakers in, in Africa, is Usman Semben. He has never sat on a chair in this high school, let alone university. So. Of course, if you want 
Africa to be free. If you want Africa to be with herself again, if you want African people to assume the responsibility of being human beings on earth, they must speak and promote their languages. The lie that is prevailing here, I always say it in the National Assembly, is prevailing everywhere. You say I'm representing people in the Gambia. It's a lie. Okay. What is? The lie is that I go there and speak English. They don't understand. Those who elected me don't understand the word of English. And I'm supposed to say exactly what they think is in their interest. How do they know? How do they measure the fact that I'm representing them? When I speak, they don't understand. And somebody on the radio and television, they just say whatever they want about what I have said. Is that representation? So, this so is one of the fallacies of democracy in our context here. There is no true democracy here. We are deceiving people, and the time is coming, increasingly coming fast to stop this rubbish. So you are part of that problem because you did not decide to speak in Mandin, in, in, in Parliament, like you talk about the, the Wangiko in Kenya. Are you also you part know, of that I, problem? I, I, you are also deceiving your people? No, no wait. Are you, you, in a, you okay? Let me answer your question. Right. You know, the first question I answered, I asked when I became an MP in 1997, was why is it that we cannot speak our languages when the law provides that we should speak our language? Of oh, the law. Yeah, the constitution provides that we can speak our language. But it says we must make it an act. This is the act that has not been made, so therefore they don't use it. One day I was speaking, I wanted to make a quotation in the the speaker called me down. What quotation was it? No, no, I won't tell you that. For the benefit of all viewers. No. So that you know. <laughs> they have forgotten it. You see, so it is not Syria who did that. If I were alone, I would speak Mandinka. I would speak Fuller. But did you make since 1997? But you make the, law the law is saying, yeah. the law is saying, you know, this is what I, you want me to go into. You are wasting I'm my not, time not, again. No, no, this is you see, the, time, in yeah. the first place, the law, well, you know what, they, what are the requirements of the law? For you to be a candidate, yeah. you must be tested and proven that you can read and write efficiently, fluently in English. But that same law says all citizens of this country are equal. But the same laws go, ah, but if you can't speak English, you cannot be an MP. You cannot be a councillor. You cannot be a president because you don't speak English. It's not a contradiction. Of course it is. But you is, it not, is that not anti-democratic? It, it is. Right. That's what I'm saying. So, but the law, yeah. as it is, unless it is changed, is that I know I knew before I went to Parliament that I would be obliged to speak, but I also I also mean to be one of the catalysts to bring a fundamental change in that. I cannot bring that only if I'm if I'm not in the National Assembly. Okay. It's possible tomorrow I bring a, a private members bill to say that we use national languages in the Gambia, okay. and it will be it will be proved, it will be approved, it will be it will be it will be enacted. Okay, um, we, we are about to wrap up because I know you are busy. But what are your views on the Gambia's membership of the British Commonwealth? And recently, this is on to join the Francophone, Francophone as an observer. You know, again, I'll answer of your question. Of course, you have to answer this question. I will what answer you your know, question. You know what is my know what outside? I will answer your question. But again, when this matter was debated in the National Assembly, where were you? I was here. You should have been there. You see, you should have had But I can't force. be everywhere. You, no, but you, uh, you want to tell me Fatu has only you as a journalist? He is there. This man is there. No, this so are, this there. Are I then. know many of them. Some of them are girls. I know. So you should go for things when they are wrong. And that's the time you can help shape. But this is dead. But, okay, let me answer your question. Huh? Well, Commonwealth used to be, used, what it used to be, yeah. it is no longer that. It used to be totally dominated by Britain mm -hmm. because it emerged as a result of the fact that they didn't want to lose their former colonies. It's like France, what Franco France is doing now is aping Britain, la francophonie, c'est exactement la même chose, pas de différence. But now, it is independent, and people are assuming their independence within the framework of the Commonwealth. And people are not just there, as I said, as beggars, as if Britain has anything to offer anybody that we cannot offer them. I say, yes, this is a, a, an association. 
If you think you go there just to get, you might as well not go there. But you must also think first and foremost, what can I offer to my associates in this association? That is crucial. Yes, you take, but you must also give. Within that framework, in accordance with that idea, yes, to be a member of the Commonwealth is good because together we can do a lot of things. Together we can change the course of events in the world if we are honest with ourselves. Uh, you serve before and now also as a parliament. What will, uh, what are, how are the difference in terms of how parliament functions? You served previously and you were out and you came in again. What, what are the differences now? <laughs> the differences are big. You know, the parliament I went to, I started in, was a parliament that was under a dictatorship. Parliamentarians there were under control. Mm -hmm. The vast majority was APRC, and that vast majority was under control. So they were not themselves. They never expressed themselves as parliamentarians. But now, the big difference is that the, this one is very vibrant. People are, and it's increasingly becoming, people are increasingly becoming critical. People are increasingly, because we, they are becoming more and more aware. They are learning. We are learning. And we are, we are moving towards what the, the consultant in the workshop that I was attending, and they call transformative legislature. We are tending towards a transformative legislature. Now we are an emerging legislature. And our target is to become transformative. Well, it was recently revealed that the POIs contributed the staggering amount of almost $3 million towards the coalition 2016 campaign. Don't ask me the question. Halifa said the question. I will ask And you he because... even threw a challenge. He threw a challenge. I am not going to over go. So you don't want to answer my question? No. No, I'm not answering because it has been answered. But I want the answer from you. No. Why? If Halifa says no to anybody, anything, maybe. But Halifa, I'm Halifa out. Sida is Sida. No, but yes, yes. But you know, that's why we, that's another big difference between our party. We always discuss. We always. I remember there was a time Jame said, "You are a pagan." Oh me. Jame once said that it was on on, on me. Yes, on the, never. On the, on the, of course, never. For me, on, it, was, never, it was in a campaign and it was printed on the. No, honestly speaking. Are you or, okay? Yes. Yeah. Well, I have never had it. You have never had it. But I know whenever I meet with Jammy, well, all the meetings I had had with Jammy, there was no such thing. Okay, that he was would clap you I know because the, the journalist who wrote that article was on the Observer newspaper. Then. I've now, never okay, heard are you a religious person? Are you practice? Are you a devoted? This Muslim? has nothing to do with politics. Yeah, this is a, from politics. You are moving huh? to religion. No, that's, 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 it, it, you have, it has to be off records. I don't want to talk about your deity. No, that's my personal business. Okay, it has nothing to do with you, no, with him, no, with him. Fine. Your God, yeah. even though we may be worshiping the same God, may not be the same. Your perception of God and my perception are different. Even though you are a Muslim, you call yourself a Muslim, and maybe I am also a Muslim. So, maybe but you, Muslim. you see, what people make mistake about, yeah. religion is not an ordinary matter. You can't just sit down and say, <laughs> No, no, come on, you. Yeah, do, yeah I, I understand. Uh, it's not an ordinary matter. It's, it's, it's you know, you, you believe that. <laughs> I won't say these things because they are not going to be helpful to you. The, another issue finally has to be with the vehicles given to the National Assembly members. Not, you see, say, you are coming Of course, the these are issues we have to discuss. So but you, you have to you know what is interesting? Okay, you know. No, no, you are, you are caught. You have Okay, all right. Answer your, ask your question. You are, I know the question. Okay. Because it was asked a million times. Mm -hmm. You are asking why we have not accepted the Yes, vehicles. simple answer. I, my, my role as M, an MP is to play the fundamental role of oversight and scrutiny. That is my role. I'm not in Parliament as a beggar. I'm not, a, I'm not in Parliament to be giving charity. If you do that, you are bribing me. 
then you are preventing me from playing. If I am not a conscious person, you are preventing me from playing my role as an oversight person. And then, of course, as an MP, you cannot just give me this. You say, see, there isn't. I'm interested to know where you have got it. Have you stolen it? That's right. I'll tell you a story. When we were arrested in 1997, I found myself. We are not taken to cell, but we were in their office. It was time to night. There were two new mattresses there. These very expensive mattresses. And then the policeman came and said, you can use this mattress. I said, where are these mattresses from? Interesting. He said, they were stolen. I said, so you want me to lie on a stolen property? Is that correct, policeman? What was his response? He said, well, So you slept on the floor? No, I won't tell you where I slept, but I didn't sleep on those mattresses. So these ones, I'm not saying they are stolen. Yes. But if you bring vehicles, mm -hmm. I was told that it costs 1.5 million. 1.5 million dollars. And somebody gave about 60 of that to somebody. And that somebody doesn't want to be mentioned. Me, as an MP, in your calculation, should I accept that vehicle from that person who is offering that to me and doesn't want me to talk about his name? No, he you, doesn't no, want, you his, want me to answer that question. He doesn't want... No, you, I'm, 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 I'm... Okay, I understand, I understand. I'm using, I'm yeah, using, yeah, I'm using the Socratic method. You know, if you know Socrates, he will never answer your question that you ask him. Yeah. He would ask you. And the question he asks you will produce the answer. So... You didn't say we will not. I said, but where are these vehicles from? Did you buy them? Is the money from our coffers? Or were they given to you? If they were given to you, who gave them to you? Are you giving them to us free or are you giving them to, them to us on loan? Define, explain how these vehicles they are gotten. Simple as that. And now, those who condemn us in those days now are asking the same questions now, even though they have the vehicles. They are asking the same questions now. So, we have indicated. Finally. There is no final question. You've yeah. asked me no, the this final, is question. final question. Now. What would you say to people who say, you've been used by Halifa Salah? You are a disciple of Halifa Salah. Well, that is their opinion. Are you? No, you ask me, what would I say? I say, that is their opinion. The new dispensation we have, people should be free to say what they want to say, but they must say it with responsibility. And you must assume responsibility for what you are. You must be capable of substantiating what you say. That is somebody's view. And that is somebody's perception of Halifa and Syria. I cannot change that. But if that is, is, is that, whatever that mass person thinks is his or her business. But Syria is here, Halifa is there. Halifa, right now he's in Brussels. He's not with Syria. In a few weeks time I'll be in Kigali. I'll not be with Halifa. And I'm talking to you now. I'm not with Halifa. I'm answering your question. I understand. Huh? Mm -hmm. And I was just from a forum. I was not with Halifa. So that is no bad. People must always say things about others. Nice or not nice. But me, none of them bothers me. If you say nice thing about me, sometimes when you say something, I'm, I'm afraid of you. Because I don't want anybody to say anything, any flattery of whatever sort. I don't want to be contaminated in any way. I want to be pure in what I'm doing. And if I am incapable of doing it, any day I feel I cannot do it, I will give up. I have given up a long time ago. But then, 
When there are certain things to be done, some people must sacrifice. So that Halifa wants to be an MP. You know, me, I'm a linguist by profession. My territory is still a virgin in this country. But I was doing it. The government was not willing to apply the very policies that they, pro they, pro they formulated themselves. And I don't want to be a hypocrite. People will be saying, ah, we have seen there, there. And when they are not allowing me to do what is to be done, I say what is required is a fundamental change. And that I cannot do unless I join them. Sheriff Bojan of the Standard Newspaper, he said he is Sidia Jata Botno Doi. Will you one day be president of this country? That's my final question. I'm, gonna, the, you I'm know, not going to ask you any other question. You are asking me. No, I'm not, this is a final okay, question. All right, okay, okay. You are asking me an impossible question. No, no, is that impossible? No, it is. Well, you say, will I ever be president of this country? Okay. I cannot answer that because I don't make myself a president. But people, even they, when they. Believe. If ever the Gambian people think in any juncture that Syria is the only person who can serve us better in this capacity, they come to me and I'm able bodied. I'm still good there. Why should I refuse it? I'm always prepared to serve my people. And I'll continue to do so until I'm not able to do anything. Even if there is nothing, no reward for it. My reward that glorifies me to do something to see that it is serving you. That is making you change for the better. That is my glorification. That is my salary, the biggest salary. Money is nothing. We make money, so money cannot enslave me. I make money, so money cannot be my enslaver. And it's not something that will make me crazy. No. That which I create is under my control. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs>